The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the April 3rd, terrific Thursday edition of the Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I am grateful for your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential, folks, that's something you and I, we must master each and every day. So let's begin our day with an empowering belief. How about this one? Don't waste a good mistake. Learn from it. Picture this. You're in the midst of a war, a battle between the limits of a crowd, seeking the surrender of your dreams and the power of your true vision to create and for you to be able to contribute. It's a fight between those who will tell you what you cannot do and the part of you that knows and has always known that you are more than your environment and that your dream, backed by an unrelenting will to attain it, is truly a reality with an imminent arrival to occur soon. And I want you to personally, I want to really personally thank each of you for joining us here at TFNN because you help us to make our dreams come true. Together, you and I, we, we can make the impossible possible because impossible to us is nothing more than the I am. I am possible. That's how we spell that word, folks. Yes, you will attain your dreams, and if you make a mistake along the way, I say just learn from it and continue to move forward. Let's move forward with these markets out here. Right now, we've got the Dow trading out at... Uh, Sixteen five eighty. It's up by uh, seven points. The S and P is up seventy cents. It's trading at eighteen ninety one. Nasdaq up one point. It's trading at forty two seventy seven. Russell two thousand back a point. Trading at eleven ninety one. Uh, NDX one hundred up three. New York Stock Exchange nine points right now. Trading out at ten six zero six. Uh, Goldilocks back six dollars and fifty cents. Trading at twelve eighty four. Silver off twenty five cents. Trading at nineteen eighty. Or call numbers eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Give us a call, folks. Happy to uh, hear from you. Take a look at your chart out here. Let's try to see if we can get a feel for what's going on inside the markets. Let's start off with the ES Mini, the S&P Futures. Let's take a look at the uh, daily chart out here. Let's see what it is uh, doing. Let's go see if we can find some support, some resistance. Where are we at? What's the key number to be watching on, uh, watching for inside the ES Mini? 18, I'm going to say it's going to be 1880.50. You're trading at 1884 right now, so no movement here. If, in fact, the ES Mini gets back below the 1880.50 level, that would then indicate that you're up against some significant resistance. It broke above that yesterday. We want to see if that uh, move is real. If it's real, that says that price can continue to move north. If it can close back below the 1880.50 uh, level, that says, uh, guess what, maybe we had a little bit of a false breakout there. And that says price can move all the way back down to 1826 uh, and continue to to continue to trade with inside its trading range. Let's go take a look at a shorter term chart here. Let's look at the 120 minute chart for the ES Mini. Let's put that up on the screen. Let's go take a look at the uh, Rhodes Momentum Indicators. Let's see what patterns we can find here um, in the uh, June contract. So it's going to be the 120 minute chart that's going to pop up on our screen out here. What we've got in place right now, we've got a, a price relative strength divergent pattern. What does that mean? I'm glad that you asked me that question. It means that we've seen price move higher move higher on less relative strength. What do I mean by that? Well, relative strength, let me put my uh, little crosshair up here. The trading session of uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, and that was on, what was that, April the 1st out here, we saw the ES Mini get up to a high of 1875. Makes a high of 1875, continues to move higher. So the very next two-hour session, it moved a little bit lower. But what it has continued to do ever since that high it's continued to, in essence, move higher on less relative strength. That is a bearish divergent pattern out here. Now, we were talking about this uh, yesterday. 
uh, and the and the pattern that we had coming out here, and we see the Bears trying to trying to uh, force the hand, trying to take control, but the Bulls are just simply getting in the way. How do we know that the Bulls are getting in the way? Well, one of the things that I have created, what I call the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, and they're really marked by these little boxes here. You don't have to worry about whether there's a letter, whether you can see that letter. Just when you see those little either red or green boxes, they tell you who is in control of the market, the Bulls or the Bears. Let's face it, if you're going to be trying to sell the market short who do you want to be in charge you want the bears to be in charge well i can tell you as we speak here right now and even though we've got this divergent pattern the bears are really nowhere to be found the bears every time the bears are every time the sellers let's call them sellers whatever you want you know whatever reference you want to use every time the sellers come in the buyers are able to just simply gobble it up, gobbly. It's not gobbly gook either. It is. They are able to gobble it up. All you have, all we have out here, all these little red boxes. Ever since the uh, first one that was formed back here at about six o'clock in the morning, and that was on March the twenty uh, eighth. So we can clearly see since March twenty eighth, coming off of the uh, lows out here, we have had nothing more than the buyers in control. Only red signals. The last one that formed six o'clock this morning out here. However, and we have to be cautious, we do have price moving higher on less relative strength. That is never a good sign. The question is if this is going to crack, and that can resolve itself over time. So that's the key. It can resolve itself over time by just simply getting some more strength out there. We'll see if that happens. At this stage here, uh, it is the bulls who are in control. So you get below that 1880 level on the daily chart. You get below 1880 on the uh, intraday chart here, the 120-minute chart. And then that would signal to us that, okay, we're going to see the uh, bears, we're going to see the sellers try another move, try another move lower. I don't know how the battle is going to win. I can't tell you how the battle, what's going on inside the battle here right now. And that would help you. If you're long, there's no reason I can see of to get out of a long position here. And if you're short, I can find all kinds of reasons to make sure you've got a tight and stop out here and to get out of the uh, pattern or get out of the uh, trade or just again, just make sure don't just make sure you've got a stop in place no matter when you trade. This whole business, this whole game that is out here, which is the best game, the best business in the world, it is truly all about money management. It is the only game that you can play where you can put your bet on the table you can wait for the next card which in our case here is either the next tick or the way that i like to trade is the next candle out there and if you don't like what you see you can take your money back out there to me that's not gambling that's called money management and the moment that you realize that this whole business is about money management it's about keeping your losses small it is not about being right or wrong you trade whatever pattern it is that uh, gives you the signal you stay consistent with that pattern and you make sure that you have stops in place because we can't control the markets all we can control is what it is that we do with the information that gets presented to us. So that is the ES Mini. Let's go take a look at one of the weak links out here. Let's go take a look at the weak link out here. Let's take a look at the NQ. Let's see what it's doing. Let's use the same time frame out here. Let's see what message of the markets the uh, NASDAQ futures is painting for us as well as it has uh, moved off of its uh, bottom out here. We take a look at coming off of the uh, low. The very first time we saw the uh, buyers step in, that was 6 o'clock in the morning. That was on March the 28th. What we'll see here with regard to signals from the roads, momentum, uh, indicator uh, system, uh, patterns out here, nothing but buyers have been in control. Only red boxes that have formed out here. We have seen no signals whatsoever in order to uh, take a, a short. Not yet, as uh, Lee Corso would say, not so fast. What we do have... It also has a price relative strength divergent pattern. In order to overcome that, we're going to need to see price get above the uh, session here on the 120-minute chart. That took place at 10 a.m. The high out there is 36.6850, so that is a resistance uh, level out here. Uh, but still at this stage, uh, we have not seen the uh, sellers been able to do much work at all other than just move down into a, a support level out here. So that's what's going on inside of the 120-minute chart. Let's go take a look at the NQ on the uh, daily chart and see what it is doing. Come on, baby, work for me. Don't do that. Don't freeze up. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look at the NQ. Let's go see if we can find where resistance is on the uh, daily. Let's take a look at the uh, market uh, profile system out there provided to us by the folks over at uh, TAS, TAS Signal Box. And we can see that what on a daily chart out here, 
Uh, the NASDAQ futures running right into resistance. So this is very cool because that resistance area, the actual price point of that, uh, is the uh, 36.6480 mark. If, in fact, on a, a daily basis, because this is the weak link here, so we can see that it's clearly up against resistance. If it breaks above 36, 6, 30, what's called 36.65, Certainly on a daily chart, if it closes above 36.65, price ought to move up to the next resistance level right around the 37 to 33-ish type range. Right now, what's holding it in place is resistance out there, and that is on the uh, NASDAQ. Let's take a look at uh, what's going on inside the uh, currency world out here. Let's go check out our Euro-Yen, see what it is doing. Boy, it's sending us a, a signal that it could not bust it up. It's trading inside this little consolidation zone now that was formed at the beginning of it, being formed here at the 0.786 Gartley sell pattern, and that is from March the 7th. So the signal that it's sending to us is we should see some selling pressure inside of the uh, markets out here. So we're seeing a little bit of a divergence here with uh, prices trying to rise, yet the currency pair moving south. That is never a good picture out here. This can be turned around. What happened yesterday? We see a doji in Stevie's window that had formed here right at uh, resistance, meaning the 0.786 Gartley sell. What is this currency pair likely to do? Well, it's likely to travel all the way back down to that sign of strength, to that support level, which takes you all the way down to the March 6th area, right around the 140.41. So that's the message there on its daily chart. Let's go check out the 120-minute time frame out here for the Euro-Japanese yen, see what it is doing right now during this session here, this two-hour session, which ends at 11 o'clock, so another 43 minutes or so. It's running right up against that rising price channel out here, uh, that uh, black line that was uh, began and established back in the early part of February. So if it can hold this area, that would actually be bullish out here right now it's testing that area if it closes below that coming into the 11 o'clock session certainly 142.14 is in range and i would also have to say coming all the way back down to 141 level would be the likely outcome what happens there it makes a point six one eight retracement we'll see if in fact it can hold that area but right now it's traveling up against a uh, support area. Yes, it's pierced through it, but remember, this is a 120-minute chart, and you can't call these candles before they've actually formed out there. You've got to stay with inside the time frame that you chart, and you need to let the candle signal itself uh, go ahead and complete during that uh, time frame. Uh, let's go take a look at... Uh, Let's take a look at the ETFs out here, see what's going on. Let's go take a look at the IWM, uh, or I'm sorry, the diamonds. So what are the diamonds? Let's start off with the diamonds here since that's what popped up on my screen. If we take a look at the Dow diamonds, they're now above the December 31st uh, swing point, or they moved above it. That high was 165.51. Uh, so far, we've seen that high today of 165.75. You're trading really at that December 31st area. Yesterday, that area was approached. You had 5.6 million shares on the 31st, and it was approached with 5.6 million shares yesterday. So kind of a draw. I was approaching it, you know, with, with pretty decent volume out there. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow. It is trading out at uh, 16.585. Was the Dow able to get over it's December 30. I know that the diamonds did out here. But let's see, was the Dow able to get above the December 31st area? I'll have to check that out when we get back from this uh, next uh, break out here. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. 
This Red Lake Greenlight Market Profile System dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you are under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, not a lot of uh, movement out here since we uh, broke away uh, for that uh, breakout here. The New York Stock Exchange uh, has got net declining issues today, still not too shabby, uh, minus 121. Uh, get 10 times that amount today, get into the 1240 range, and you uh, have some uh, problems, Kim Wasabi. Uh, we were talking about the uh, Dow, or I was speaking about the Dow. Let's go take a look at it. It is now exceeded. It has moved above the highs from December 31st. So it's finally joined the fray. December 31st, the high that it made yeah, it was 16,588.20. That was the 52-week high. We now have a new high out here, a new 52-week high. That number that it's gotten to this morning here, 16,604.15. You're trading at 16,585 right now. Why is that important? If you are watching us on Tiger TV, I've got the uh, profile system up on the screen that shows uh, – where resistance is at. It's the red diagonal line, the red, yeah, the red horizontal line, I should say, that you see going across my screen. That number, 1658.25, that's the number. Yesterday, price hit that area and uh, closed below that. If this continues to act as a resistance zone here, and then this is where you've got, this is where from a bullish or bearish standpoint, if you're neutral here, it's really where you could, uh, you could, you could consider taking a short trade. All right, so that's an option, and what you would do is you would close that trade out if you were to see a close above. So I'd give you both the bullish and the bearish side. If you see a close above 16,588.25, that would tell us that you're wrong on the short side of the trade here, and you should be on the bullish side, and that's how I would play that. And what we'll do here is really try to take the message of the, well, let me, let me see if I can find the profile on a weekly chart. Let me see if that will pop up here. 
It's usually better when you take a look at the uh, futures market as opposed to the uh, cash index out here. Yeah, you're not going to get anything off of this from the data standpoint on the uh, on the uh, weekly chart. So if we take a look at, uh, and now actually I'll just go put up the futures chart for both. Uh, let me do that here right now. So that, that's why I'd be looking at, though, on the cash index. So you're really right up against an area of, of significant resistance. And it can, you know, you can give you the, both the bullish and the bearish side here. That's the nice thing. You, you always want to be in a, a trade or look to be getting in a trade when you're, when, you, when price is back up against the wall, right? I mean, that's the best opportunity. It's your best reward to risk to get into a trade and then to get out and take the other side of the trade. And never be afraid to do that, folks, uh, to take the other side of the trade. when the in, when, Because what you're really doing, just take a look at it like this. You're just simply buying information out here. You're buying information. You know, and that means if the trade does something the exact opposite of what you thought it was going to do, you can take a look at taking that other side of the trade. So as we took a look at the Dow, we saw where resistance was. We've taken a look at the uh, NASDAQ, the NQ on a daily basis. So you've got the strong area up against resistance, right? And we've got the weak area up against resistance out there. And that's pretty important because... If the market is going to get extremely bullish from here, you're going to see those areas get taken out in both the NASDAQ futures as well as the Dow. And so that's pretty cool. Likewise, if these areas hold here, we're going to see some kind of retracement. Is it an all-time high or not? Uh, you know, no way to know that. There's no, been no signals. Because if we go take a look at monthly charts, it's going to say, are you kidding me? Not even a, a chance out there. <clears throat> But that's just simply because monthly charts take a while to form. So on the daily charts for what is the weak index out here, which is the uh, is the NDX 100, is the composite, the N, uh, is the NQ uh, versus what's going on inside of the uh, daily on the uh, Dow out here. And so I think that is extremely helpful. It should be helpful in being able to uh, try to plan your trades or get a feel for what the market is doing. Likewise. What I had said earlier was the real power of the uh, markets is absolutely the Euro-Japanese yen. And as we go back to that and we take a look at uh, this currency pair, we'll give me a moment here to pull that up on the screen here, uh, that's up against resistance as well. Give me a moment here. And that resistance was really uh, uh, formed yesterday with that little doji candle. That doji, when it's up against uh, resistance, and resistance, why? Because it already had formed a 0.786 Gartley sell pattern. So you can see that's trading lower. We, looked, we took a look at the intraday chart out here. And what this means is we're now, so if you were looking to get bullish, uh, this means that we should see a market that's going to go ahead and retrace and pull back. Is this the big one? You know, I don't, I don't know. All we, all we know is let's just, let's, just have, let's just have calm and cool heads here, and let's just take things one thing at a time with the information that, uh, comes to, that, that is coming to us. At this stage here on the 120-minute chart, the euro Japanese yen is not moved into the over uh, sold condition, so we should see that that 'll probably occur as the euro Japanese yen gets down to the one forty two fourteen area, maybe a little bit lower than that. So the real key is going to be what happens during the first opportunity here for the uh, bulls to come in and start taking a look at the, any type of pullback as a buying opportunity. Do in fact they uh, do that out there so I hope that that helps you by taking a look at the strength in the Dow and the weakness being the NASDAQ, and both of those on their daily charts have their back up against the wall, up against resistance, and the currency pair is saying, hey, I want to head a little bit lower here for a while. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is uh, down 9, S&P off uh, 1, uh, NASDAQ composite down 14. So let's go back to the NASDAQ here, and let's take a look at the 120-minute chart. Another 20 minute chart, you're going to see that we've got a uh, Gartley uh, pattern that has formed out here. Made a 70% uh, retracement. It's got A to B equals CD patterns that are in here right now. And on the 120 minute chart, it was also what we also have to recognize it was in the overbought uh, uh, condition out here. And it back got in that overbought condition as price moved up at 10 o'clock on uh in the morning a couple of days ago on april fool's day on monday april was it monday or tuesday tuesday I should, tuesday i should say so stayed in that uh, over uh, bought uh, level the uh Above the 70 uh, range inside the uh, 14 period relative strength index out here. What we see here now today on the 120 minute chart is you've got a, a nice big old bearish engulfing candle effect. Now, look, this candle doesn't uh, complete until 12 noon out here on this uh, contract, so we've got a lot of time left in the uh, trading session. But if we were to close here, this would be a very large bearish engulfing candle. If it closes underneath the uh, price of. Uh, 3647.75. It will have engulfed uh, all the uh, sessions up until about uh, from from between April, from today this morning until going back to April first at the uh, close out there. So that's a pretty big sign. Now what you also need, what it needs is it needs to have uh, follow through on that very next session. So it says by two o'clock, 
you also want to see a lower close out there. So to get an, a better idea, right, as to what may or may not be going on in the markets, we just simply go down to a shorter-term time frame because if this Gartley sell pattern exists here on the 120-minute chart, guess what? It exists on the 30-minute uh, uh, chart also. So if we go take a look at the 30-minute chart out here, it's actually a check for any kind of uh, price uh uh, a price relative strength divergence. No, nothing that I see out here. So on the 30-minute chart, what we're looking at is also a bearish engulfing candle. Now that took place, that completed at 1030. So now what we've got is this session going into the 11 o'clock uh, time frame here. And really what you'd like to see is just simply follow through to the uh, downside. So going into 11 o'clock, well, <clears throat> how, how can I say what you'd like to see? You're looking for information, so I don't know whether you're a bull or you're a bear out here. If you are a bear out here, you want to see additional follow-through to the downside. If you are a bull out here, you want to start seeing this candle. You want to see this bearish engulfing, in essence, get erased out there. And by erased, ideally, you would see price move all the way back up to the uh, price level of uh, 36.63 out there. You're at 36.49, so it would be a nice move. So that's what's going on on an intraday basis. Again, you've got to keep all of this stuff in perspective to your trading styles, to your trading time frames out here. Because, again, uh, just to show you the, the what I mean by that is if I go back and let's take a look at, uh, let's bring up some daily charts now. Let's bring up the daily charts of the uh, NQ. We'll take a look at daily, weekly, and monthly out here. In order to do that, I'm going to switch over to the continuous contract so that I've got enough data when I get to the uh, daily and weekly out here. So the NQ right now in the daily is doing everything that it can to try to get into a, a bullish mode, very close. It's trying to get in line with the other uh, indexes, and it just hasn't done it here just yet. What would it take? Probably takes getting up to about the 3680-ish type mark in order to do that, at least above... Uh, 3669. So I'd say 3670 to 3680 out there. Uh, in this case here, it's been a counter trend rally. It's still a counter trend rally as we speak right now. And why we have to pay so close, my opinion, why we have to pay so close attention to what goes on in the NASDAQ. But if I switch this over to the weekly chart out here, which I'm going to do here momentarily, the weekly chart shows me that on a weekly basis, even as we speak right now, the bears lost control. They lost control of an opportunity that they had out here to push the market lower. And they have uh, uh, done that by getting above the uh, eight uh, period. Uh, you know, and they, there's a price relative strength divergent pattern that we have to be paying attention to. That was confirmed. We have seen lower price out here. But as I take a look at it, if you just simply come back, if you listened in the opening segment, we were looking at the 120-minute charts to see who was in control, bulls or bears out here, just to keep things in perspective. Again, I've developed this Rhodes Momentum Indicator strategy, this uh, signal system to tell me, which I then say is able to tell you who's in control here. And it's just simply marked by red or green signals out here. Red doesn't mean sell. It's just simply a, a red shaded box. And to me, that means that buyers are in control. And if you go back into February of 2013, that's when the buyers really began taking control. The only time we've seen sellers in here, uh, that took place back in June of 2013. And as soon as we got a, a close above the high of that June 21st, 2013, it was back off to the races. And ever since then, we have not seen one of those green sessions form. Not even with the move lower back in February of 2014 out here. So on a weekly chart here, uh, this shows you, in fact, the last time we saw any kind of momentum signal on a weekly basis, it took place right here on March the 7th, 2014. It told us on a weekly basis the buyers were still in control of the market out here. So it, it's a matter of keeping things in perspective and staying with inside your time frame. And if you do that, then all of the other stuff becomes nothing more than theater and noise. And going to the theater is nice. And sometimes you like to have nice noise. You like to turn those speakers up uh, loud out there. If you take a look at the monthly chart, the monthly chart showing us the same thing as well, meaning that you've got nothing but buyers that are in control, even inside what we consider, what I consider right now to be the weak index the weak link but that's all dependent upon the time frame that we're taking a look at there is no person that can uh, take a look at this monthly chart that i know of that's a tech a uh, a techno analyst and tell you that the nasdaq composite is bearish they might have a potential for a reversal with regard to some system that we might use out there that being said that's fine that means it's a potential 
type of a top. But you just can't look at the uh, chart here, and at least I can't. That is not a, a tool that I've found that tells us that the uh, that the uh, top is in here or the top is in just yet. It just simply needs it's because it doesn't exist, because it's not out there. In any event, that's what's going on inside of the uh, NASDAQ. Let's go take a look at, uh, actually, let's do this. Let's look at what's going on inside some of the sectors out here. How about that? Let's go take a look at the XLK, technology sector, number one sector inside the S&P 500. I need to do this for myself, so I might as well do it for myself live here. So here's the uh, monthly chart for the XLK. Again, what you see here, nothing but these are red roads momentum signals out here. The last one that's being formed, guess what? It's this month that we're in here right now, telling us that inside the technology sector, the XLK, the number one waiting structure with inside the S&P 500 right now, is bullish. And that's the monthly chart. Let's go take a look at the, what the weekly chart is showing us. Weekly chart right now. Is showing us the following. Oh, the weekly chart shows what? A price relative strength divergent pattern that has uh, formed here. However, there's no bearish reversal signals just telling us, uh, you know, there's some clouds. It might rain or something like that. Nothing bearish about the weekly chart as we speak right now in the uh, technology sector. Let's take a look at the uh, daily charts out here. What are the daily charts showing us? Daily charts are showing us that price is up against uh, is up above resistance. Old resistance should become new support. What do I mean by resistance? Well, on a daily chart, up at these highs here, we've seen the bears try to step in. When they do that, they form reversal candles, those being bearish engulfing candles. In this case here, you're looking at the trading session from March 8th, the high there, 36.65. They did it once again back on March 22nd. March 22nd, the high there, 36.74. They did it once again on March 27th, 36.74. Prices above that area right now, you're trading at 36.81. What we have seen here yesterday was prices come back and test that area, test an old area of resistance, becomes a new area of support. And thus far here, if you take a look at the daily chart, inside the XLK, the number one weighting inside the S&P 500, it most certainly has not given us any kind of a sell signal as we speak right now. Let's look at the XLF. The XLF. In fact, we'll go take a look at the, uh, we'll pull up the XLF. We'll go take a look at its market profile as well. So on the uh, daily uh, chart here for the XLF, the financial sector, which I think is the uh, second uh, weighting structure with inside the S&P 500, it's not above resistance. So it struggled at resistance on the daily chart. That was uh, formed on March the 10th. The high there is 22.50. If you can see the XLF close above 22.50, that would be bullish. Old resistance then would become new support. Is this bearish? No. It's just got some resistance. It's got that high hurdle that it needs to overcome in order to get really bullish out here. On the weekly chart, what are we going to see inside the XLF out here, the financial sector? It's forming a price <coughs> relative strength divergent pattern. In doing so, it's not been able to form a reversal signal. It's telling us that the uh, bulls that the buyers are still in control here, and the bears are trying to do everything they can to thump, but they've not been very good thumpers out here. Let's take a look at the uh, monthly chart. Monthly chart here for the XLF. What is it signaling to us? Monthly chart is signaling to us that you're in a nice, big, strong, strong-like bull market out here. The monthly chart shows that price is now above its resistance, which would have been the January candles, that January high out here, and that was at 2216. You're at 2236 as we speak right now. Now, let's go see, just out of curiosity, let's take a look at the market profile. We'll put in the XLF. Let's go see what it is doing. Let's go see what uh, signals this shows us for support or resistance here on its uh, daily uh, time frame. So we'll pull that up on the uh, screen here momentarily, see if we can identify it. Okay, so on the XLF, what this is showing us is it's actually up above its uh, most recent market profile high. So this means that it's in bullish mode out here. That market profile is a price level of 2232, 2232. Now, right now, you're trading at 2236. So on the financial sector, on a daily basis, if it gets below that 2232, closes below there today, that's where its back is up against the wall out here. So that is on the uh, daily basis for the financial sector. Let's take a look at the uh, XLK. Let's go back and see what its area of resistance or support is using the market profiles system out here. Let's take a look at it. And on a daily basis, heck, it's not anywhere near um, It's not anywhere near a uh, resistance uh, level. That's in the uh, tech uh, sector out there. Let me see what's moving out here in the uh, markets as we speak right now. What do we got? So we've got Priceline, BIB. Let's take a look at BIB. Let's take a look at Biogen, B-double-I-B. Let's go see what it is doing 
with regard to uh, support or resistance. So as we take a look at it on the uh, daily basis, Biogen, uh, it's got a uh, significant, it uh, formed a, a new area of resistance, not anywhere near that price point, by the way, 343.66. Of course, it has also formed a new support level at 267.52. So right now it's just kind of mid-stroke here, not providing a, a ton of information. But let's go take a look at it anyways. Let me see what's going on here. Was we pull up uh, BIB, B double I B, and take a look at uh, uh, anything else that it might be uh, showing to us. Let me start with a, a clean chart out here for uh, BIB. We can see a big volume to the uh, downside here, wide ranging bar. So there, you've got some institutional selling. You never want to see that. Uh, that was on the trading session of March the twenty uh, first. 5.7 million shares to the downside. That area here is now acted as a resistance zone. So we'll just simply take that high volume bar right here. We'll draw a red line across there. And you can see that the bounce up that we saw here back on uh, Tuesday, yesterday as well, that is what really held things as resistance. So that's, that's telling us that sellers are camped out right there. They're saying, come on, reel me in. Come on, reel it in. Come on. Try to push price up here because I've got lots of shares that I still want to uh, sell to you. So looks like the institutional selling still inside of uh, Biogen. Now, will it find some support out here at this sign of strength that took place on November, November 22nd out here? Very well, it may be. The high of that is 289.97. If it can break through that, the low of 245.31 would likely be the price. So that would be a price target if somebody were short here where you would expect it to find some resistance. That is on Biogen B double I B out there. Let me see what else we've got uh, moving out here in the uh, market. We've got, uh, let's see, to the downside, Illumina. That's off 3.5%. I L M N is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go check out uh, Illumina. Right now, so the Dow is off 15, S&P is down 2, Composite is off uh, 15. Of course, really, the New York Stock Exchange is one that we really want to be paying attention to today, so I haven't covered that, so we'll do that here uh, either in a moment or when we get back from our uh, next uh, breakout here. But let's take a look at Illumina right now, see what it is doing. It's trading out at 151.46. Uh, right now, uh, this could be uh, forming an A to B equals CD down. It ought to have, uh, and if, if it is, let's take a look at what that price projection uh, would be. So inside of Illumina, the A point on this right now is going to be the uh, high. It's all time high, by the way. It's not all, well, it's at least it's 52 week high, is what I can say. And that's the uh, price level of uh, 183.30. That was from March the 4th. The B point on this would be the uh, swing point from March 27th. The low out there is 133.82. That becomes our uh, B point. C point would be the retracement up through yesterday, the high, which was one. 62.61. An A to B equals CD. A 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. This is pretty cool. That would take it to a price projection of 112.73. It's a 49 uh, point move off of yesterday's high. And what's uh, cool about that is that price projection also runs into the old resistance line of its market profile out there. So you would expect Illumina, if it is going to move to the downside, that is where it would find its support level. Let's take a look at the uh, VIX index here this morning. Let's go see what the uh, VIX is uh, doing. Uh, it is trading certainly below its 50-day exponential moving average, trading out at 1322. So that is still bullish out here. Uh, the 50-day uh, exponential moving average is at 1460. Boy, you see, if you do see the VIX get above that, uh, of course, if you were to see that take place today, you'll see a huge market sell-off. You'll also see the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, turn negative with regard to its summation index. When we get back, we'll go take a look at the NYSE. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely 
completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is off 17. The S&P is down 2. Uh, Composite off 17 as well. Russell down Oh, Russell leading the charge to the uh, downside. It is off uh, seven points out here. New York Stock Exchange, that's what we're going to focus on here just for a, a bit. Now, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing that. If you're listening on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, we appreciate that very much. Remember, you can always catch the archive of this show on Channel 10. And what we're looking at right now is the uh, monthly chart for the New York Stock Exchange. So we'll start with monthly, go down to uh, daily now. When the uh, when the highs were made back in uh, 2007 in the New York Stock Exchange, <clears throat> we did have a uh, confirmed price relative strength divergent pattern. What do I mean by that? I mean that on the uh, trading session, the trading month, I should say, of May of 2007, you had uh, the uh, NYSE get up to 10,004.49. Uh, relative strength reading there, 83.15. Several months later, one, two, three, four, five, five months later, October of 07, it made its high, 10,387.17, and it did it on less relative strength. And it was that very next month, on the monthly basis, where it gave you the signal 
That was the month of November. It gave you a nice big bearish engulfing candle. That was a confirmation of a topping pattern. The very next month, we saw follow through to the downside, and the market, as we know, did its thing, went all the way down to the bottom of its consolidation, its long term consolidation, its 16 year consolidation. Well, yeah, yeah, 16 uh, from 19. 96. So from 1996, went all the way down to the bottom of its consolidation out there. Now, what have we got here thus far? Number one, the month of December, we saw price get up to 10,406. That means it got slightly above that October 2007 level, and it did it with a RSI reading of 73.51. Where are we right now? One, two, three, four months later, right now, April of, as we speak right now, that RSI reading is 70. We've got to be paying attention to it out here because we're now starting to see potential price relative strength divergence. This is a monthly chart. It will need several more months to uh, confirm out here. What we do know is this. Okay, so that's one thing we want to be cautious. We want to be paying attention to. You'd like to see that divergence taken out so it doesn't exist, meaning see more relative strength, and that way we don't have that same 2007 pattern. What we do have is an absolute breakout, a 6,000 point breakout of this consolidation pattern that is in here. You see, it made its measured move back here. That's the red box that you're looking at, the red rectangular box on my screen. When it went ahead and broke above that back in uh, July of 2005, it made its measured move. It went a little bit higher than its measured move and made those highs back in 2007. Price came all the way back down to the bottom. That set up this large consolidation that we have inside of the NYSE. That's a 6,000 point consolidation. What do we know? Price broke above that level, came back and tested it last month. So the test is in. You're above it right now. And this chart here it's not just bullish, it's actually extremely bullish out here because this is the wider swath of the marketplace out here. So we want to be focused on and pay attention to the NYSE. If we take a look at it, the weekly chart here for the New York uh, Stock Exchange, um, there is just simply nothing bearish about it as we speak right now, at least with regard to reversal candles. There was during the week that uh, ended out here March 14th, but the uh, bulls or the bears just simply lost control of any momentum that they had to the uh, downside. If I take a look at the uh, daily chart now, uh, the only... Uh, there's really nothing uh, uh, with regard to the daily chart at this stage. The price oscillators are above zero. The summation index is uh, turned up, and that's going to take 1,240 issues today. Uh, that means net declining issues in order to turn that down below zero. And that's where things would then start to get dicey on the daily time frames out there. So, folks, it is terrific Thursday. That means we've got a great lineup for you. Our man Basil Chapman is up next. After Basil, we go out to Larry Pesavento. After Larry, it's Daryl Martin, David White, Andy Hecht, and the Tom. O'Brien Show. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. Thanks so much for being here. Look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care now. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.